Let's bow our heads for prayer. It's been a wonderful time we spent together during this miracle healing explosion. And this is the last day of that miracle healing explosion. And you know what your hearts have been desiring or to been asking from the Lord. I want you to just briefly talk to the Lord about those needs in your life. He will hear if you tell him. He will not neglect the desires of your heart. Father, we thank you for this time. We bless your name because of your love, your power, the purpose of gathering us together. Lord, we are praying that this day you will bless us abundantly in Jesus' name. We pray that the truth will be revealed to our hearts. And the truth you reveal will make us whole and set us free in Jesus' name. Bless us mightily. In Jesus' name we pray. From the first day of this program, we've been sharing with one another on what Jesus accomplished on a cross of Calvary. And already if you were here from the beginning, we have consistently gone through those saints of the Savior on the cross, seven of them. And you have seen that Jesus Christ, from what he suffered, from what he said, from what he did, that he provided perfectly for all our needs. Not only that, in the Miracle Fellowship, you have listened to our house fellowship leaders share with you. And no doubt you have seen for yourself that we died with Christ in identification with him. We were buried with him. And tonight you will be seeing that we have risen with him. You have listened to messages from the word of God concerning Jesus Christ, the great physician. And you listened yesterday as you saw the various ways in which curses come upon the lives of people and the perfect, complete cure we have for every curse. Now, we're going to consider power over disease and death and the devil. As we talk about power, I want you to realize that the God we serve is a God of power, the God of all power. And Jesus Christ, who has redeemed us, is also full of power. All authority and power has been given to him. Not only that, you are part of the Holy Spirit, is the spirit of power. And then the word you hear is the word of power. And the believer himself is an individual that has power with God, power with men, and power over principalities on this earth. The God of power, the Christ of all power and authority, the spirit of power, the word that communicates power in us, and the believer being a child of God, indwelt by Christ, and also enabled by the spirit and also is receiving the word of God every time. That believer is also full of power. And if you are a type of believer like that, related with God, you live in Christ, you're full of the Spirit, and you know the word of God, which is the word of power, then you'll be manifesting power over disease, over death, and over devils. Look at Psalm 62. Verse 11. Psalm 62, verse 11. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power 
belongeth unto God. There must be no fear in you. If you are a child of God, if you have been redeemed by the Lord, if you can look up and say confidently, Abba, Father, there must be no fear in you. Because the one you pray to, anytime you say, Our Father, which art in heaven, the one that now you belong to is the God of all power. Before the devil was ever created as Lucifer and the son of the morning, God had been the God of all power. Before any tree, before any leaves, before witches and wizards, the eternal God, the almighty one, has been the God of power. He was and is and forever be. And if you have been brought to the Lord as a child of God, the power of the Almighty God supports you and surrounds you. And the Bible makes us to understand that underneath you are the everlasting powerful hands. God has spoken once. And twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Not only that, do you ever think about it? That from the day you are born again, from the day you are saved, until the time you leave this place and you go to be with the Lord and you see him face to face that Jesus Christ is ever with you I want you to think and imagine that everywhere you go in a village, in a city, in a town imagine that the most powerfully equipped soldier on this, uh, in this land is going with you every time and every time is watching over your house everywhere you go he goes with you in the town on the street in the village is just with you every time and is there sharp powerful mighty with all the weapons that the armory can just equip him with you turn around, you look at him. You look back, you see him. Every time you just say, Oh, I wish I, before you finish the sentence, he's standing at attention saying, Don't forget, I'm here by your side. Now think about Jesus Christ. He is more powerful than that. He has whipped the devil. He has defeated the devil. He has even conquered the grave and death. And he has conquered disease. He has conquered everything. You know, when he rose from the dead in Matthew chapter 28, this is what he said in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now you are protected. Because he is by your side every time. You know what he said in verse 20? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Never forget that. I am with you always. You sleep, he never sleeps. You get tired, he's never tired. You may be sorrowful, he's never sorrowful again. You may have a problem, he's on top of problems. You may feel that, well, I am weak, he's never weak, he's never tired. And he says, I am with you always. He is no more the weak, the tired, the suffering, the betrayed, the crying, the sorrowful Christ on the cross. Oh no, he's risen from the dead. And all power, all authority belongs unto him. He is armed. He is full of power. And he says, all power, all power, power over disease, power over demons, power over devils, power over all circumstances, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And with that power, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world, in the village, is there with you. In the town, is there with you. In the night, is there with you. In church, is there with you. With your enemies, is there with you. And he has an overcoming power. All power has been given to him. And he is your savior. 
is your Lord, is your friend, is your provider, is the one that is taking care of you, is standing by every time. Is closer to you than your problems are. Look at Luke chapter 4 and verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went a fame of him throughout all the region round about. In verse 32, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. In verse 36, they were all amazed, and they spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits and the come out. Think about it, that that is the Christ always with you. Always with you. You don't see him, but he is there with you all the time. In his power, in his authority. And the devil recognizes that power. Principalities and powers, they recognize that power. All the evil spirits, they recognize that power. And I believe, as you have come to the Lord, that power will never fail in your life. That power is always there. Now, think about it, that a child of God, a believer, is one that is born again, and is the person that the God of heaven and earth is his father. Not only that, Jesus, who has all authority and all power, has become his savior, his lord, his friend, his protector, his provider, and the one that says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. I've told you that the spirit of God, the spirit of God also has power. And if you are a child of God, you have the Spirit of God. I've told you before that as soon as you are born again, the Spirit of God begins to witness in you that you are a child of God. In Romans chapter 8, verse 9, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Then that is plain then. If anybody says he belongs to Christ, is a child of God, then he has the spirit of God. Of course, when you become sanctified, you have more of the Spirit of God. Of course, when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have much more, much more of the Spirit of God. I must not deviate from what I'm saying, and maybe I'll make a fuller explanation later on how you have various levels, measures of the Spirit of God. But then, just for today, it's enough for you to know that once you are born again, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God dwells in you. And then, this Spirit of God we talk about. Look at Romans chapter 15 and verse 19. Romans 15, 19. Romans 15, 19. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God. That's what I want to point your attention to. That the word power is a central word in the Godhead. God the Father has power. All power to crush the devil's head. All power to destroy the power of the enemy. All power to do all things that we want him to do for you. 
and then Jesus Christ. He announced and he said, all power, all authority has been given to me. And now the spirit of God that lives in you, that dwells in you, that is the spirit that has power as well. Wonderful, mighty power. And I've told you that even though you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost yet, you are just born again, you have this power of the spirit. Turn to Micah chapter 3. Micah chapter 3. That's in the Old Testament. One of those people they call minor prophets in the Old Testament. Micah chapter 3, verse 8. If you can't find it, just listen to me. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. You see that? Truly, certainly. You know, those Old Testament believers, they were not baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus said that it's only if I go, if I ascend to the Father, the power, the Spirit of God will be sent upon you. Therefore wait in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. All those worthies of old, all those patriarchs of old, all those prophets of old, they did not have what we now call today, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But then Micah said, even though I do not have the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is still future, which Joel spoke about. When Joel said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and then your sons and your daughters, they will see visions, and then even the old men, they will dream dreams, there will be anointing and mighty power upon the believers when the Holy Ghost has come upon them. But even before that time, I am truly full of the power of the Spirit of the Lord. That then assures you that if you are born again, the Spirit of the Lord is there. And there is power in a measure. There is enough power to make you live an overcoming life. Enough power to make you live over temptation, over sin, and even over disease and over the devil. Now, I've told you, God is a God of power. Jesus Christ announced he has all power. And then the Spirit is the Spirit of the power of God. How about the Word of God you are hearing every time? You know, every time you're taking the Word of God, every time you're taking the Word of God, you are taking in power. You know, sometimes uh, they make all these announcements and see them on the billboards that if you feel weak, if you feel tired, just this pill, just this vitamin pill, it will bring vigor into you, power into you. And maybe you have tried it and you are so weak, you are so tired, and you say, well, I don't think I'll be able to go to work today. But let me test some of these pills they are talking about. And you take just that one vitamin pill and you swallow it. All of a sudden, within five minutes, you say, it appears I'm not weak anymore, I'm not tired anymore. That thing has circulated with your blood system. And now the power, the strength, the vigor you didn't have before, you rise up, you stretch your hand, you stretch your leg, and you say, I can do it now. I can go where I couldn't go before. Do you know? God's pill. That's the gospel. When you're taking that God's pill into you, it gets into your mind, it gets into your spirit, it gets into your soul, it gets into your blood, it gets into your body, and you're full of the power of the word of God. There is power in the word of God. Now, you know, this is why the devil fears the believer. Because his God is a God of power. A savior is full of all power. The spirit that lives within him is a spirit of power. And the word he takes in every day is the word of power. Look at Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. The power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek to the Jew first and then also to the Greek listen to this the believer 
is one who has turned away from sin and from Satan to believe in Christ who has all authority and all power. Thereby, he becomes a child of the all-powerful God. He is indwelt by Christ in the power of his spirit. And the word he receives every day, the words, the word of God he takes in every time, generates faith in him, which gives him prevalent power in prayer. When we talk about praying, and you think about a believer that is full of the power of God, and then he goes to kneel down, or he stands up in his authority, and he lifts up his two hands, the devil begins to tremble. Even before that believer opens his mouth, because the devil recognizes that that man is not alone. The devil recognizes that that man that is standing in authority and is going to pray, that man is a prince before the Lord. He knows that that man is a person that belongs to God, the God of all the universe and the God of all power. He knows that this person has Christ living in him. And this is the person that has this Christ, is the Christ that overcame death, overcame the devil, overcame diseases. And the God of heaven has given all authority and power to that Jesus and this man who comes to pray he comes in that name, in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you before you open your mouth to pray, the devil is shaking already you didn't know that before you didn't know you have all that power before and now that believer having the spirit of God you know, that is the spirit of God that in power made Jesus to rise from the dead and now the word is going to speak. He is not going to speak the word of the doctor that says you are soon going to die. That's a word of weakness. He is not talking about the word of the psychiatry that said, well, this man, it will take him five years before he comes to his senses. That's a word of discouragement. It's not going to tell you the word of his neighbors that say, well, you are so unlucky in life and, uh, you know, with this your situation, we don't know whether you'll ever overcome. Oh no, that's the word of unbelief. But this man comes and he comes to speak the word of Almighty God. And the devil begins to tremble. The devil trembles for you. Whenever you are going to pray, remember that you are a child of God. Remember Jesus is inside you. Remember you have the spirit of power. And remember the word in you is the word of power. And the devil will be afraid of you in Jesus' name. Now, let me show you a believer praying. In Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. And in verse 28, and he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel. A change of name. A change of name. Didn't you hear when I said it yesterday? And when we said it over and over and over, if any man is in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. And that means you have a change of name. You have a change of nature. You are a sinner, now you are a saint. You are a child of the devil, now you are a child of God. You are weak, now you are strong. You are of the world, but now you are of God. You are the spirit of the world, now you are having the spirit of God. You have the nature of Satan before, now you have the nature of God. You have a change of nature, a change of name. And it says, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a priest thou hast power with God and with men, and has prevailed. The next time you pray, remember, you have power with God. And in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I might say more about that verse later but what I want to point to you now is that as a child of God, when you kneel in prayer, when you stand in prayer, you have power over the enemy. You have power with God. And it says, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not. 
that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. This power belongs to those who are born again, whose names are written in heaven. And if that believer goes ahead and he goes deeper in the Lord after he is saved, he says, Lord, just make me holy. Just sanctify me. Just purify me. After that, if he goes forward and is baptized in the Holy Ghost, that's terrific power. That's wonderful power. That's prevailing power that the devil can never, never overcome. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Oh, you say that well. I never feel the power. When I get in the vehicle in the morning, I never feel the power of the engine of the car until we turn on the ignition. But the power is there. While the car is in the garage, I never feel the power. I never hear the sound of that power. But the power is there. And if I sit in that car and I'm just discussing with somebody and he's sitting there with me and the car is stationary and the car is not moving and the key is not turned on, I don't feel the power, but the power is there. You know what is happening to you? You have the power inside you. But many times you are sitting in the garage. You don't turn it on. How do you turn on the power of the Spirit of God in you? Oh, that's a long, long story. It's a beautiful thing. When you just come in the presence of God and you come to worship and you come in the name of the Lord, you come with that power inside you and you open your mouth and you begin to praise the Lord. Probably in your language, probably in the language of the Spirit and you just open your heart and open your everything within you. You open up to the Lord. You are turning on the key. That power begins to sound and the devil hears the sound of that power. But you know, if the car is just there and I don't turn on the key, even a little child can play in front of the car because the power is not on. The power is there but it's not on. Even a dog can sleep under that car but because the power is not at work but the power is there. That's what is happening to the believer. He has the power but he doesn't turn on the power. And he keeps quiet. He doesn't pray. He doesn't just raise his voice and just turn on that power and just begin to talk to the Lord Almighty. And then you may find that there are little, little difficulties there. But what happens if you park a car down and a dog is just lying under that car? Children are playing in front of that car. Immediately you turn on the car like this. That dog will just get out from under the car. When you begin to pray and you turn on that power, all those evil things, all those sicknesses, they come from, they come out from under the car in Jesus' name. But you know, the problem is that many times you don't turn on that power. But from now on, you are going to be turning on the power in Jesus' name. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. There is power. Now, this power is power over disease. Two, it is power over devils. And three, it is power over death. Let's consider it. One, power over disease. In Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. From verse 14 to 15. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. When Jesus called his disciples, he had this purpose and this plan that they will preach, not only that, that they will have power to heal sicknesses and power to cast out devils. 
You see, those are twelve. Yes. But let me ask you a question. As you read the New Testament, can you count more than twelve that manifested that same power? Yes. If you begin to count Stephen, if you begin to count Philip, if you begin to count Ananias of Acts chapter 9, if you begin to count Paul the Apostle, yes, if you begin to count Timothy, yes, if you begin to count all those believers that went out in the power of the Lord. You see, it was just at the beginning that he called the twelve. And he gave them power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. If you begin to count the 70 that is sent out two by two, and the devils were subject to them, and evil spirits were subject to them, and diseases were subject to them, to the word of their power, to the word of their prayer. If you begin to count all the rest, you'll have more than 12. And if you begin to count all the people today that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and they stand in their authority, you have more than 12,000. You have more than 12 million. Anybody all over the world that has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, if he is taught, properly taught in the word of God, he will have power over disease and he will have power over sicknesses. Don't be surprised. You are here today. Maybe you are hearing this for the first time, but come again and hear it again. Come again and hear it again. Come again and hear it again. And as you begin to realize and meditate on the word of God, that my Father has all power. My Savior has all power and is with me all the time. And the spirit that indwells in me is the spirit of power. And the word I learn is the word of power. You realize you are a believer that has power over disease. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples for his start, for the foundational work, for the beginners to start the ball rolling, when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power, he gave some clean spirits, Power against unclean spirits and to cast out devils, to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. That's power. Power over disease. Power over sicknesses. And we're also told in Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his twelve disciples together. And gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Well, you see, all these passages you have read, they talk about the twelve. Well, we agree that they may not all be up to the apostles, everything limited to the apostles, but it looks like all those twelve people, they had pastoral responsibility. And maybe all that we can learn from that is that he gave all the people he has appointed as pastors, as prophets, as apostles, as evangelists. He gave them power over diseases and over devils. So we agree that God can give power to the one that is making it his full-time job to preach the gospel. He can give him all the power, all the power to heal sicknesses and to heal diseases. But to say, I'm just an ordinary believer. And I don't see from all those passages that that power has been given to me. Look at it in Mark chapter 16. If all that I've read, if all those are not for you, see if this one is for you. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Are those pastors alone? Are those full time uh, preachers alone? All these signs, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Thank God it is for you. Thank God you have that power. Thank God he has given it to you. In my name, do you have the name of Jesus? That name is powerful. In the night you use that name, the devils will be subject to you. They will be subject to that name coming out of your mouth. 
in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them praise the lord the devil can't catch you again Herbalists can't catch you again Witches can't catch you again Familiar spirits can't catch you again All those spirits of mommy water They cannot catch you again If you drink any deadly thing It shall not hurt you in Jesus name And they shall lay their hands on the sick Remember, these are not apostles only Remember, these are not pastors only Remember, this is not even denominational preacher Anyone, anywhere, anytime They shall lay their hands on the sea And they shall recover Now, in your house If they say somebody is sick Don't say, well, let us take a taxi and go to Bagada There is a little Bagada right there in your house Just tell them, bring the child here Bring the child here And lay your hands on that child You are a believer full of the power of God you are a sister, you are a brother, you are a young person, you are an old person. If you belong to God, that's the God of power. If you belong to Jesus, there is power in you. If the Spirit of God is in you, there is power in you. Lay your hand upon the child and the child will recover in Jesus' name. Anywhere you are, in the office, somebody is suffering. Somebody is saying, well, I am dying and I, uh, they must take me to the hospital now. And uh, you say, hey, don't, don't tell them and say, well, if uh, you can just go to Bagada next uh, Thursday. And the man says, today is Tuesday and I'm dying. I, suppose I die before Thursday that I go to Bagada, just say, I am here. And now I've read in the word of God If I lay my hands on the sick They shall recover And they will recover in Jesus name Amen. Look at John chapter 14 Verse 12 Verily, verily I say unto you You know when I read something like that I believe that God is Jesus is talking to me You know I'm surprised how some people read the Bible when they read and Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. They know that Jesus is talking to them, That if I am not born again, I will not see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, That he that gets angry and says, Thou raka, he shall suffer punishment. Oh yes, they believe Jesus is talking to them. When Jesus talks about judgment, they accept he's talking to them. When Jesus talks about not getting into the kingdom of God if you are not born again, they believe he's talking to them. But now, after you are born again, and Jesus says something like this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, and they say, he's not talking to me now, he's talking to the pastor. You see how people behave? Talk about judgment, God is talking to them. Talk about not getting to the kingdom of God, God is talking to them. But when Jesus begins to talk about power that belongs to the believer, they say, no, he's not talking to me anymore. He's talking to you this morning. Power belongs to God and that power is transferred unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Thank God for that power. Thank God for that power. That power is in you. Now, you may never heal a sick person, but the power is there. You may never turn on the car. So, just push in the key and turn the car. And the, your car may never make any sound. But the engine is there. The power is there. It is your fault that you are not operating that power. And in the same way, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Word of God, the power to heal the sick is right inside you there. And as you turn on that power, the power will work mightily in your life in Jesus' name. Not only that. There is power over the devil and over devils. In Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. From verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, 
that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Destroy him that has the power of death, that is, the devil. Now, do you notice that in our society, and not only in our society, in the world, people are afraid of the devil. They fear Satan. And they fear to go in the darkness because they say a ghost can meet me on the way. Have you realized that whenever a little girl is confessing and said that uh, it belongs to mommy water spirit, it belongs to a mammy spirit uh, group, it belongs to familiar spirit group, there are some believers there that will be shaking. Fear will run down from the center of their head to the center of their heart to all their body and all their skin and all their hair will come out. And because they say, ah, look at this small girl. This small girl says that she has this power, she has this power under your feet shortly. There is enough power in you that God can walk through. And there is enough power in God that you can walk through. It goes both ways. Enough power in you, deposited in you because you are indwelt by the Spirit of God. Because Jesus is inside you. There is enough power that God can walk through and defeat the devil. And you in God, there is enough power in God that you can walk through and channel through and defeat the devil completely. The Lord, the God of glory, the God of power, the God of peace, shall bruise Satan under your feet very shortly. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 and 16, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, whereby, wherewith, ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. There is power over evil spirits, over devils. Now we read this before, let's read it again. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Let's read from verse 17. And the 17 returned again with joy. And the 17 returned again with joy. Let me remind you of this story. These 70 people were sent out. They were sent out into the field, the field of people filled with darkness and disease and suffering and terrible, terrible problems. And they were sent out for the first time. They had never done it before. This was the very first time Jesus called the 70 together and he said, I have given you the power, I have given you the authority. Now you go in my name and put all those things under your feet, defeat them. And they went out and they came across sicknesses of various names and various categories. And they came across problems that they had never seen before. They came across uh, the powers of the devil being manifested, which they have never seen before. Because all these uh, people that have just been following the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus had been healing the sick, casting out devils, but now they were to go out and do it. And they went out two by two. And when they got to the field, they saw the powers of darkness moving. They saw the powers of the devil manifesting. And they saw evil spirits, familiar spirits, demonic spirits, every type of evil spirit manifest in the lives of very many people. But then they went out in the name of the Lord. Now, you are going out of this place now. And you may see problems you have never seen before. But remember, when you see that problem you have never seen before, the name of the Lord is in your heart. Bring it out. Now, you may see sickness that you have never seen before in your family, in your neighbors, in a co-tenants, and you have never seen it before. And the, the likely thing, where you are confronted with the unknown, you are confronted by something you have never seen before, the first thing that may happen is that, can I do it? Just jump up in the name of the Lord. You can do it. Christ can do it through you. It was the first time they saw it. And then, when they came back, they reported. They said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And that name is still as powerful as ever today. And the devils and the evil spirits will be subject to you through the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. 
And he said unto them, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. Thank God. I said, thank God. He has given you that power. I want you to say, God has given me the power to tread on serpents, to tread on scorpions. God has given me power over all the power of the enemy, over all the power of the witches. From this day, nothing. I said nothing in the sky, on the earth, in the sea, shall by enemies hurt me. When I sleep, I am free. When I'm awake, I am free. Everywhere I go, I go with the irresistible power of Almighty God. Stand up and manifest that power. And that power is also over death. You are a victor. You are an overcomer. You are more than conqueror. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, the power is in me. The power is in me. The power of Jesus, the power in the name of Jesus, that power is within me. Call upon the Lord. You are victorious in Christ. You are victorious in Christ. You are victorious in Christ. Christ's power is within you. Christ's power is within you. The Holy Spirit's power is within you. There is nothing to fear again. There is nothing to fear again. No fear of disease, no fear of devils, no fear of death. That power is there. Turn it on. That power is there. Turn it on. That power is there. Turn it on. Turn it on. have any disease on your body, there is enough power here this morning to take that thing away. Whatever disease it may be, whatever disease it may be, just trust the Lord and as we pray, the power of the Almighty God will take it away in Jesus' name. If you have been tormented, harassed by evil spirits, there is enough power here this morning that will drive everything away. And if you are fearing death at 23 years of age, at 32 years of age, at 60 years of age, and you are fearing every time, every time, every time you are fearing death, there is power over death. Jesus lives in you. 
and there is power that will cancel that thing in your life in Jesus name and I'm going to pray for you and as we pray God himself he'll give you the victory and remember when you leave this place today you remember that if you are born again that power is inside you and anytime there is a need Anytime somebody is sick, anytime somebody is harassed and tormented by the devil, turn on the power of God in you. That thing will go away. Now, before I pray for you, if there are people here that have not given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, these three days from Friday, Saturday, and this Sunday, yesterday and Friday, we've seen many people give their lives to the Lord. And if you've done it already, just believe the Lord. Because it's unto you according to your faith. You've called upon the name of the Lord. Believe that he has answered and he has saved. But if you've not done it. If you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this power will not work in you. If you're still living in sin. Because sin separates you from the power of God. And from the God of all power. And if you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you've not done it before. I want to give you the opportunity. Just raise up your hand wherever you are. That if you've not done it before, if you didn't do it on Friday, you didn't do it yesterday, and you just want to do it for the first time, that you say you are a sinner. You want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand and believe the Lord right now. That as you confess your sins, as you repent of your sins, and say, Lord, I give myself to you, you are now my Savior. That he comes in, in his power, he forgives you, your life is changed. I'm waiting for those people, just press up your hand, inside or outside. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. we know that you are a merciful God. You loved us so much, you sent your only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. These people have indicated they are believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Save them in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, you died for these people. And you said, whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise for no reason cast away. Lord, I pray for them. As they have come to you, receive them in Jesus' name. As many as received him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God. Even as many as believed on his name. As these people believe right now, I pray that you give them the power of sonship, the power, the privilege to belong to you completely in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Now, if you are sick, I want you to realize that even your own prayer can make you totally free from sickness and disease. And now you pray, I pray, two of us praying on the same thing. Ah, uh -uh, God must answer. Because we're in agreement. You want healing for yourself, I want healing for you. And if two of us shall agree as touching anything, God says, Jesus said, that it will be done for us of our Father which is in heaven. And therefore, whatever disease may be on your body, we're in agreement together. And the power of God will work mightily in your life in Jesus' name. So just lay your hand on that thing that is uh, bothering you. Or if you have a family problem, the devil is trying to scatter your family, just lay your hand upon yourself. Or evil spirits, evil powers are trying to torment you. They don't have any right to continue to do that. You have realized that today. Stand your ground when you get back home. Stand your ground. When a little girl says that uh, she has a familiar spirit, command that thing to come out. You don't have to wait until Thursday. You don't have to wait until you see the pastor. You don't have to wait until prayer warriors are prayed for you. You have the power in you. Drive that thing out. It will come out in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because of your power. I thank you because of the authority in the name of Jesus. I thank you because of your spirit you have given unto us. 
I bring my brothers and sisters before you. I bring all these people who are worshipping here this morning before you. Oh Lord, I pray, whatever sickness is in their body, I command right now that they will come out in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. And for everyone here that is sick, of whatever disease, I pray that the stripes of Jesus will take the sickness away from their bodies in Jesus' name. Those who have been tormented, that person over there that something has been walking through your body, tormenting you, harassing you, I command that thing now in the power of the Spirit of God, come out in Jesus' name. That person that is always feeling the twitching and the and the itching inside the air because of the uh, because of the power of the evil spirit, I command that thing right now. Come out in Jesus' name. This person to my left over here, you were poisoned many many years ago, and the effect of the poison is drying you up, drying you up. And Jesus has said, "This sign shall follow them that believe. If they drink any deadly thing, shall not hurt them." All those things who were given before that is making it to dry up. I command that thing come out in Jesus' name. That woman that had a dream and you were giving something to it, and since that time you have been bleeding, I command that bleeding to stop. I command that evil power to stop. I break and destroy the power of all those things you have taken in Jesus' name. That person underneath your head at the back, you are always feeling that pain. Like a small ball that is there, and you're always touching the place. Oh Lord, I command right now, with the power of the Almighty God, that that thing will come out in Jesus' name. All these adults that are still wet in the bed at night, I command that that thing will stop from your life. That all those evil things the devil has been doing, so at last thing you are making you to suffer. I command that that thing will stop, it will stop in Jesus' name. All those that are having family problems here this morning, and the husbands or the wives, and they are saying, Oh no, I'll never be in agreement, I'll never be in agreement. The power in the name of Jesus is greater than the stubbornness of that man. It's greater than the rebellion of that man. Oh Lord, I pray right now that you will destroy all that stubbornness and rebellion, and you'll bring these families together in Jesus' name. Those who have been affected by evil powers and evil spirits in their families, and those evil powers of witches, they are saying, as long as they are alive, that those families will never come together. Oh Lord, right now, I break that power. I destroy that power. Whatever juju, whatever messing has been done against these families, I stop everything and command everything to come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that you will grant these people the desires of their hearts in Jesus' name. That person over there that has wanted to build a house, and you took the sign, and you took uh, everything you wanted to use, you took it on the side, and since you got to that side, and the sand has been lying there, and the rain has been coming, just washing the sand away, you are not able to go back there again. The power that is hindering you, the power that is um, that is um, not making you to be able to prosper, I command that power to crumble and be destroyed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I just pray to deliver these people. All the things they want this morning, all the things they desire this morning, all the things they ask asking from you this morning, the believers who are here, oh Lord, I just pray, you will satisfy them. You will fill their cup to overflowing in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray, as these my brothers and sisters, as they live here, they will be saturated with the power of God. They will move with the power of God. They will command sicknesses and sicknesses will go. They'll command Satan and they'll command evil spirits and evil spirits will depart in Jesus' name. And Lord, according to your promise, that they will not die prematurely. You will preserve their life. And Lord, in this single life they live, you'll make them to achieve what you want them to achieve and your goal and your plan for their lives in Jesus' name. Let your blessing go with your people. Let your people be under your protection in the day, in the night, in the village, in the town, everywhere they go in Jesus' name. Now as they go, Lord, I pray, evil powers and evil people, when they see them, they will tremble. Even the people that have mommy water spirit and the people that have familiar spirit, when they see these believers, they will tremble in Jesus' name. And as these believers will go out according to your word, according to your promise, if they lay hands on the sick, those people will recover in Jesus' name. 
all the people that have not turned on your power before, I pray from now on, as they pray, as they mention your word, as they quote your promise, your, your power will be turned on in a powerful way in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for believers who have been afraid all their lives. I pray that that spirit of fear you'll cast out of their lives in Jesus' name. Let your people go in your power. Release your power in your people. That everywhere they go, whatever they say according to your promise will be effected in Jesus' name. That from today, their words will be decreased. Their word will be words of power. Their words will be words of authority. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray.